And welcome back everybody to Pharaoh A New Era. I am 7177 here and we are on a sandbox mission. I wanted to go ahead and do a version two of my housing tutorial. You can see here we have a beautiful double loot, um, you know, which is not something I had in the first one. I want to also use this video to answer a lot of the questions that I was asked in the first one that came up. They're all great questions. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to demonstrate my single loop here and how I do that along with my production line. And then we're going to demonstrate this double loop and then the uh, double production. And also we're going to talk about the advanced features like a Senate house, a library, a mortuary, two gods, stuff like that. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, we're back here on the same mission. We just have a clean slate ready to go. Before we get started, I do want to mention a few things. One is if you're new to this and you see this tutorial, do not build all of this at once, okay? I'm going to do it for just to demonstration purposes, but you would want to space things out. If you want to see what I mean, you can always check out my Let's Play videos where I do this, but you don't need to put all the houses in. You don't put all the stuff in. The, one of the biggest things about having a loop like this is you can really control your population on how you want it. I need a few more people, add more houses. I need a lot more. I'm going to throw down a courthouse so they'll evolve past the courthouse stage or I'll have them buy beer and stuff like that. You know, so it, it's really beautiful about that. And second of all is, you know, um, plan out your housing. When you start a mission, go ahead, get in there and start throwing down roads, stuff like that. Plan out where you want everything. I even save a mission like Timna startup or something like that. So I can always go back and reference on how I wanted to do that. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to delete that road there for demonstration purposes. And I'll put this down here so I can put a tax collector in. Um, just kind of ignore that. So I'm going to get started over here. That was seven over. That number doesn't count. That's just uh, how I went ahead and did this before we got started. So our first road here is going to be eight. And you can see it in that box right there. It is the number eight. And then we're going to go over. We're never going to overlap a road. We're going to go over. We're going to go down 17. Just like so. Then back down eight again. And then back up 17. And everything should line up. If you want to check your work, go into this middle corner, drag it down. It should say 17 and go ahead and hit that undo button. Always have the game pause when you're doing that. So at this point, you should have already decided where you want your input to your loop to be. OK, because that's going to determine where your entertainment's going to go. That one of the downsides of using this is it's very specific on how things are laid out. And if you don't meet those requirements for like water or space, you have trouble using something like this. You can always shorten it, but it kind of detracts the value from this. So I want my input to be over here in this bottom right hand corner. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over. And we're going to go down four at a minimum. You go down four. OK, no more than four or no less, but you can go five. The big difference between four and five is four is gardens and a medium statue and five. You can put in large statues if you wanted to. So we're going to go ahead and, and you could technically go 9, 10, 11, 12, etc. It's just further your guys have to walk. So I'm going to go ahead and go down four. All right, since we put our input right here, that means that our entertainment has to be opposite of this. OK, that is not negotiable. If you're going to if you had it in the bottom right, your entertainment goes in the top left. If you had it in your bottom left, the entertainment goes in the top right, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, OK, and I'll explain that here a little later. Why? So for our entertainment, you can use a um, booth, a bandstand or a pavilion. I'm going to build this out for a pavilion, but you could use either one. Just shorten it and put whatever you need in there. OK. So starting at this corner is counting as one. Let's go one, two, three. We're going to go over one and then up five. All right. And we're going to go down one and back over to this blank tile and we're going to go over three. OK, so there's this one little point sticking out and this will always point towards the corner. All right. Do it again. One, two, three over one. We're going to go up five and over three. You can always check your work. You should have a one space right there. OK, put in that roadblock. Let's take another look. All right. See, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and put these in here just for so we can see what it looks like. Um, once again, I would not build those in the beginning. So, OK, we have let's put our roadblock over here. We have our basic loop right here. This is our circular loop where everything's going to go. And we want every all of our workers to stay on this loop. OK. So let's start putting in our basic services. We got our architect post up here. I want to draw attention to this green and red square. The green square is where the guy is going to get out and walk. And the red square is where he goes home. OK, so this green square always needs to be on this loop right here. OK, so we put our architect, we put our firehouse, we'll put our police station. And since we are on a mission with reeds, we need to have an apothecary. OK, reeds are these guys down here. They will give you malaria. If you don't have reeds, you don't need that at all. And once we get a courthouse in, we can trade out this uh, police station for a dentist for more culture rating. All right, next, we're going to put in our bazaars. 
We're going to use two bazaars. Reason being that in this loop, you're going to have 3,000, 3,500 people. And that's a lot for one bazaar to handle. So you can tell one bazaar to do like chickpeas and grain and the other one to, and like say pottery and beer and the other one to do chickpeas and grain and then linen and jewelry, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, split them up between basic goods and advanced goods. All right, next up is going to be our physician. I do want to say all this is built in a very specific way because like bazaars have negative desirability. You don't want any houses next to them. All right, next is going to be our god. I usually use our patron god here because you always want to put that temporal down first. We're going to go with bass there because kitty god is best god. And then finally, we're going to do water. So a note about water. Somewhere on this loop has to touch grass, okay? Um, somewhere in here. This obviously this mission is all grass, but if you this will mean that your water could possibly be like over here, over here, down here. I find the best space for it is right. If you go to the bazaar, go over and then across the road is right here. OK, um, but that that can move as much as you can, as much as it needs to, because what's important is, you know, obviously how the mission is set up. OK. All right. So that pretty much makes up all of our basic services right there. Let's move on to housing. And I do want to say that this housing loop is based around a common residence or a two by two type of housing. And it's very important that houses evolve that way. And so when I count these out and I say one, these four houses count as one because I'm expecting them to evolve into a two by two house. OK. So let's go ahead and take a look right here. Go one, two, three. So that just like that, one, two, three. And yes, we'll have that little hangout right here. So, and I do want to say that if you ever watch my Let's Play videos, you notice that I space these out. I'll do one, two like that, and then I'll leave a space for the other one. I'll let these evolve up in the very beginning. Once they get water, they'll evolve into a two by two, and then go back and add the one in the middle and let it move in again. Um, the reason I do that is because sometimes if you do a long line of housing, say you did like this to evolve them in, um, sometimes the housing on the end would stay as one by ones. You'd have a two by two in the middle and then a one by one. You're hurting yourself because you're reducing your population. They will not be able to evolve into a common residence or beyond. You're going to lose taxes and people, et cetera, et cetera. So it's better to space yourself out, take a little bit of time. All right, let's keep putting in housing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK, and these two right here are on purpose. We're going to do four up here. One, two, three, four. You can see we left a three by three here. That three by three is for the courthouse. OK, so now that we have this courthouse in, we could get rid of this police station and put in a dentist. Let's keep building more housing. It's going to be four again. One, two, three, four. You can see and then up here. One, two and three. OK, so this road here that has the input and that's opposite of the entertainment, this 17 long road is special because it has one extra tile. OK, so you could do a shrine. You could put a dentist there technically if you needed to. But I like to do a road and we'll get into reason why later. So I'm just going to go ahead and extend that road out right there and I'm going to put a roadblock as my marker. OK, so let's build in some more housing. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is flat mode hitting F. It makes everything look flat so you can build around it. Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, you can tell you did this correctly if everything down here is in a nice line, just like that. All right, so beautification. Well, actually, let's go ahead and throw in our other service. So I like to put my tax collector up top away from my input because the scribal school is going to go right there because it requires resources. So if I have my papyrus that stack down here, the scribal school would be right there. Tax collector as long as he's on the loop. OK, so this means we'll get 100 percent of the taxes collected as well. So for beautification, I like to do you could do like a set of gardens there, a set of gardens there and then say like a medium statue. And we'll mimic that right here, put a medium statue. We could put gardens. You could put gardens across the whole thing. It's cheaper. If you have the money, you can put statues like that. All right. Um, in the beginning, if you want to, you could just do like a single line of gardens. Right. And that will get the houses to evolve up decently. But once you get to like spacious apartment and higher, you're going to need more than that. But some of you are probably saying like, wait, what about what, Wolf? You always put you always put temples back here. What's going on? So, yes, if you're like me, I hate having temples out in the middle of the desert just sitting there. You know, I like to actually make believe that they're doing something. So what I'll do is I like to put a road along the backside here of my houses. We're going to put a garden right here. 
and then we're going to put an architect's post right here. So temples will not burn. They will only collapse. So you just need an architect's post. And you can see we're still all in line right here with our housing. And then we can take our temples. We're going to start up here. And we're going to go one, two, let's see here, three, and four, five, and six. Everything lines up nicely right there, okay? So that's our six housing right there. And you can see... Um, this will give you a lot more on the gods as well instead of having to build like some temple things way out in the middle of nowhere You can still do that, but this will at least help and makes your city look nice as well You can also replace these with large statues or gardens depending what you want On this top side up here. We're gonna put more gardens and then on this side over here, we can do the same We can go down Let's see here. We can drag this all the way down to right there and we'll put that right there and then let's look so this one is special because you could actually put more temples in here so if you look we can go one two three four five and six if you did seven which you have the option to do seven it's going to hang off the end okay so that means if you wanted to if you didn't want to do seven you could just shorten that up um, you could put like your architect's post right there and then just fill this with the gardens or whatever have you. So you could do like that. It's up to you on that point. It's your decision. It's whatever you want your city to look like. Okay. So this basically wraps up the, um, the, my most basic housing loop that I use in all my missions. Um, let's talk about entertainment real quick. And the reason why, and how this works, I got this question a lot on last video. Yes, the booth, bandstands, and pavilions will spawn walkers that will walk around your city. I understand that. But the people that come from your dance school, your conservatory, and your juggler school also spawn walkers. Okay? We're just, we're, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. This does not go here. When this walker spawns to walk to here, when she gets to this corner right here, it is an equal distance from here to here, from right to left, okay? So that means you always take the shortest path. So when they send a walker out, it will go down, provide entertainment for all of these houses along the way, and then reach this bottom pavilion. And she'll do the same at the top. She'll walk up, walk across all these houses here to get that. That will satisfy the evolution requirement for the houses to evolve, okay? It will not completely solve your culture issue those are based off the number of pavilions the number of bandstands and the number of booths that you have in your entire city it's two separate values okay so this will help your houses evolve it will not necessarily help your culture rating okay only way to get past that is just build a ton more of these someplace else okay oops Oh, we didn't do our, uh, our gardens down here. So, all right, guys, that's going to wrap up this first portion here. I'm going to go ahead and cut and we're going to move on to doing the production for a single line of this housing block. OK, if you've watched this far, I do greatly appreciate it. Let's keep going. All right, guys, now that we have our single housing block in here, we're going to go ahead and work on our single housing block production line. So this is our four road exit coming out of here. We're going to go ahead and roadblock the end of that right at the end of those gardens. And then we are going to take our roads and we are going to go down six. OK, and then we're going to go back up to the top. We're going to go down nine, down four and then back up nine. We're going to do the same again. Go over nine, down four, back up nine. Okay, we're going to do this two more times. This is made to be used in a three tile segment, basically. So three of these together, you could get by with one or two, but it's made to be used in three. So I'm going to go down four. I'm going to undo that because it messed up. Go down four. I'm just going to bring it all the way up. Do three, four. There we are. Go once more. All right. So if you... Then the last video, I got a lot of questions like, oh, this doesn't work. Um, I can't get workers, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That was because I had global labor pool on. In this video, I have recruiters on, which means you have to have the housing. I'm going to demonstrate that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show the, the roadblocks 
if you are using global labor pool, okay? And then from there, I'm gonna switch to recruiter and, and the rest of the video will just be recruiter, okay? So if you're using global labor pool, you need a roadblock there, there. Not like that. All right, so just like that. If you're using global labor pool, you need it just like that, okay? If you're using recruiter, you need to fill all these in. Okay, because we want to force those recruiters to not come out in the middle and back and forth. You could also just delete these center lines where these roadblocks are right here and not have them. I like them to uh, ease travel if one wants to go from the other way to the other way. But uh, you could technically delete these center lines right here. Okay, so put in our services. We're going to have an architect's post, firehouse, and we're going to do the same on the other side, firehouse, architect's post. We're going to put in four houses. We are going to put in a physician. And then we're going to put in, since we have reeds, we're going to put in an apothecary and we're going to put in a police officer. Okay. If this has grass here, you could put a well right there. So they'll evolve into a two by two. And then you're free to put like a shrine or just leave a blank right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and unpause and let all those people move in. You can see they are walking around. There's the recruiters walking. I'm going to get the warning because I have this disconnected. All right, our people are moving in. All right, and then as soon as they pass by, we should get employment. And there we go. So now you can see all of these now have employment and they'll continue to get employment. So what we're going to do is we are going to build our granaries. So if you're now farming, I recommend that you have at least two granaries. If you have more than one food, you need a granary for each one and then you could put it all into stockyards on the side over here, which we'll get to. So we're just gonna put our two granaries, we're just gonna put them right there, okay? And then if you had like hunting yards, unfortunately I don't have hunting yards on this mission, but you could put hunting yards in here. I'm gonna demonstrate how I set a lot of this up. So we have storage yards, so I'd put like, uh, you know, you could do pottery, you could do one for beer, you could, ha you could even half them and go in and tell them to, say if I wanted them to get beer, accept all and then you click this button accept half and then you do the same for pottery or jewels or gems so say we want jewelry here as well we do half okay so they will fill up half the storage yard with jewelry and half with gems and then if you had them staged someplace else they would just keep bringing them over or you could even say tell them to um get half so they will actually send out a card pusher to go get that resource okay now Let's see here, let's go, what do I have in this map? Okay, so say we're importing barley, okay? We're importing barley to make beer because we can't farm barley on this mission, right? We could put eight brewers right there. We could put our storage yard right here full of barley, tell them to, you know, accept all barley. And then we have beer going here. We could also say we want to move it way over here because we want to ship it out. So if we had all of our docks over here or you could just put it right here and tell it to get beer, accept all beer or if you had docs you could send it over there etc etc okay and you just keep doing this basically if you had jewelry you could do the jewelers like that if you have land trade routes it doesn't matter wherever your stockyards are they'll go get it but um you can have them however it is so that i think y'all get the idea with that this is how i set up my production if you ever want to see it in action you can see it in my let's play videos but i feel it works really well and i have tons of industry that's going more than i would ever need eight brewers is a ton so all right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap the production portion up here. Next up, we're going to go ahead and modify this into being a two by two housing setup. And then also we're going to this has to go and this will be set up slightly different for a two by two housing setup. And then right after that, we're going to go ahead and modify this to have increased culture for a mortuary, a library and a Senate. Now that we've gone ahead and we demonstrated and set up the single loop here and we've also done the production for it. We're going to go ahead and move on to the double housing loop. The production for it is lined up differently, so it's all gone just for demonstration purposes. So first things we got to do is get rid of all of these temples over here. We're also going to get rid of these roads, gardens. So it is a seven road or tile space in between this 17 line and the other one. So there should be seven between. So if we went here and we went across seven, like that, that allows us a room for a two by two house. 
a large statue. Like so. Followed by another 2x2 two two house, okay? Just like that. That's where our housing block will start. So we're going to go ahead and go across our 8. We're going to go down our 17. Cross 8. Back up 17. I'm going to throw everything in there really quickly. If you want to see everything slowly, step by step, watch the beginning of the video. Now we have both housing loops here set up. You can see they're just basically mirrors of each other. Went ahead and fast forwarded through that. You've seen it once. You've seen it again. Um, but let's go ahead and put the production in. So we can do the beautification right here. I usually would like to like, you know, do a large statue there and you can kind of just mix and match however you want this. You could be large gardens, you know, whatever you want in here. It's up to you. Okay. So you can just pretty that up, put your statues, however you like to do it. So for this production here, it, this middle statue or this middle line going down this road is where you want to start at. So we're going to go down six, go across nine, back down four and across. OK, we're going to go up nine, down four, back down nine. And it's the same thing, just like we did before. One, two, three, four, as always, all the way back up. And the same as before. All right, so and I would set up just like I did in the previous portion of that is I would go check that out is we're just going to set the granaries up. We'd have multiple of those. We can have our road box put in. This is for global labor pool. Would be set up like that. Once again, if you're doing recruiters, watch that middle part of the video for the single housing unit production and you'll see how I put the houses and everything in there to set that up. So now that we have, let's go ahead and just fill this in. There we go. So now that we have all this in, we have our stand in for our production. How would we go about adding in for more culture, second God, stuff like that? So the way I like to do it is, unfortunately, you have to get rid of some housing. OK, there's no real way around it. Um, hopefully the increased evolution from all these houses make up for it pretty much. So up here by this roadblock, we're going to get rid of that one. We're going to get rid of that one. We'll also get rid of that garden and this garden as well. And we're going to put in a god. Since we have bass down here, we will put in Osiris up here. Let's let those guys get out of the way. We'll put Osiris right there. Osiris right there. So I want to draw. You can see here, draw a point to this, that it is putting it on the wrong side. We don't want it to go over there. We need it to go inside of our loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some more roadblocks right there. There we go. Come on. It's some, sometimes it's finicky. There we go. So now it put it back inside of our loop and we don't have to worry about that. And this one was good already. It's already inside the loop. So that would be second gods. Now for mortuary, library and Senate, we're going to add it down here. So we're going to get rid of that house and then we're going to get rid of those houses, those gardens. This right here, that house and that right there. OK, let me let those people get out of the way. So let's start placing everything. We're going to put the mortuary right here next to the water. I do not have a library because a library requires 500 papyrus to place. So and I don't have that. So I'm just going to place a cattle ranch. It's the same size as a three by three. So I'm just going to use that for demonstration purposes. All right. And then next up will be our Senate. OK, so our Senate, as you can see here, it's going to go one tile over and cross in like so. Yes, amount of money. Those are very expensive. So you can see it's right here at this corner. The Senate lines up perfectly. So we're going to put back in our architect's post. And then you could add whatever you want if you want to add like a garden or something there. I do recommend that you get rid of this temple, at least this temple right here. And you put in a large statue because that will help um, fix the desirability issue. Senates have really heavy negative desirability and you can see the road right next to it as well as already got rid of its plaza. So we put that right back there and it will fix it back up and this house would be good to go. Okay, so let's do the same. Warning is because of the Kingdom Road. So we're gonna do the same over here. Get rid of that house. Get rid of these over here. This, that one, and all of that right there. So we're gonna put our mortuary right there, our scribal or our library right there, and then our Senate house will go, that guy move. Right there and make sure that your green and red are in the right places. If not, you need to adjust and place these in different pla uh, place. Your architect's post in different place. OK, but it should pretty much work out. 
just pay attention to where those go in and out. All right, we're going to add our uh, architect's post and grab one. That's a firehouse. We're going to add our architect's post, and then we could just do our garden right there, like so. And then if we're going to do the same, we would delete this and add in a large statue. So that's pretty much these that will get all of these all the way up to fancy residences or right before a three by three, assuming you have all the food, linen and everything else to provide for it. So I hope this video helped guys and, and answered a lot of your questions on how I set up my stuff and how you can maybe make your city better, better as well. As always, I appreciate any type of comments, any questions, likes, subscribes, guys. It really means a lot to me. Uh, this channel has grown so much and y'all are just fantastic. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.